Complex mocking via FFLib is an open source framework that is available to mock the Salesforce Lightning Apex language. It derives its name from the well known Java framework. So this is an open source repository that is available via the Apex Enterprise Patterns and it's a subcategory or you can say a sub framework from this uh, library resource which is called as Apex Enterprise Patterns. So like as an introduction to this FFLib Apex mocking, what is it? So like it is basically the test behavior that we test for our Apex code with all dependencies that we can stub. It helps us to mock the definitions as well as the implementations of the functions called. Its major functionality is like, uh, suppose you have some objects or some data in your database. So mocking actually prevents the data from being inserted into a database and actually allows you to use it the way it is. Like you can actually use it via ID also and without even the data being inserted in the database. This thing I will show you in the further slides. So as the features read, like it is the usage of function calls that can be mocked along with the data. Secondly, like it has various methods that we will like see with verify when such utility methods that you can find in the framework, which I will show you, which is an open source framework. Apart from that, it is available as stub API that automatically generates dynamic objects at runtime. Means you can call the specific object via the S object that you want and that it can generate the data related to that. So like containing with the key features, so it this framework also provides you the capability to set the read only fields also for some specific objects, which is the use case that we often face while uh, testing or while developing the integration test. So it can set the read only fields also like an example I have shown that for the account object it has or you can say whenever you create a uh, standard object then it can also set the fields that can be done via mocking so this is a simple example like a more beautiful example i will give you as we move forward so these are some standard features now like this is the apex enterprise pattern library which i was referring earlier this is the open source from the Apex Enterprise pattern, and here we have the FFLib Apex mocks. So like this is the repo that is being continuously upgraded and uh, referred. So it contains all the like uh, readme document, readme also, and all the code SRC that is there. So like continuing the presentation now, like the details that we gather till now. And the dependencies that I was telling you, it basically includes the uh, way by which it operates. So it involves the behaviors as well as the various uh, configurations we can say. So like the generic cases when we can use the FFLib mocks. So like uh, when you are using the libraries that are used for DML operations for desired data, you can use the selectors like for selecting various objects. So there you can use this. It is a very common use case for the selector case. Secondly, integration testing that requires service methods for schema manipulation. So you can even mock the entire services to return the desired data as you want. And as I mentioned earlier, it is requiring setting up the data dynamically. Apart from that, it has a great way by which we can create the ID of an object that has been saved to database. Like it appears that the object has been saved to database, but actually it is not like the syntax that is mentioned here. It can use the ID by this format using the ID generator and passing the S object. So via this, it can return you the ID for an object that you can use for your function calls without the object being inserted to database actually. So moving forward. Like there are several simple steps that you can use for the mock testing. So it basically like on a global level, it includes these five steps, which is setting up the data means creating the instances of your objects, creating the mocks. So it is, this includes the setting up of the sectors as well as the data that you want to return and you want to be called at runtime. Third step is the given given basically means the 
setting up of our required functions with the exact name call that we want the data to be returned. And this includes like start stubbing as well as stop stubbing. Like these are the methods from the stub API. So like whenever you want to insert the code between these two, start stubbing and stop stubbing, it is simply like our start test and stop test where we pass the functions call that we want to be executed between these two statements. So this is basically the setting up of the mock data between the start stubbing and stop stubbing. It, then it involves the calling as well as the uh, returning of the data at the runtime. So it is the when. And finally, these are the then involves the simple assert statements or everything that you want to ensure that the data that you create in the mocks is being written via your call successfully or not. So these are basically five steps. Like I will repeat once again, setup, creating the mocks, given, when, and then. So let's move with a simple example. So like if I uh, talk about a simple example of creating a contact list. So first, if you like start up from the first step itself, it is setting up. So it basically set up the contact. It will provide you the contact list with this contact and you created a set of ID. Then this is the Apex mocking that created the mock. Like you mock this contact selector and, and apart from this contact selector, you mock this entire class. As I mentioned that we can mock the services, we can mock the class. So here you mock this contact selector class. Now, whenever the contact selector class is being mocked and we want that whenever this list is called, we want our prepared list. So this is the way by which we can uh, prepare later on the mock data. So like this is start from mock dot start stubbing. And after then we need to implement the mocking with every method that is being called. So like whenever we mock this class, so it has the S object type apart from that, this method, which involved that uh, select by ID. So whenever the select by ID method is called, it will return you the same list. And it will like the part till here is involved between the start stubbing and stop stubbing. And after that, if you call this service, you can verify that the data you prepared is written or not. Likewise, whenever you run the test, it is simply like running between start test and stop test list of contact whenever you obtain, and then you can verify that context selector mocks dot verify because the methods that I told earlier, like verify assert, these all methods allow you to get the values and to verify that exactly the data that you mocked is being written or not. So this was a example where i uh, mentioned about the context selection being mocked so apart from that like there are key terminologies that are involved in this apex framework so the first one is dependency injection so dependency injection basically includes the component interface as well as the implementation classes for which you want your mocking to be done so there if you have any dependency or any deleted calling there you can define those things secondly the mocks generator has also the dependency to like also has the capability to mock the dependent class. Like if you mock a parent class, then you can also mock the dependent class via subsequent calling. Apart from that, it has like test for behavior verifications also, and it can test the dependencies also. And as I mentioned in the previous slides, the expected result can be verified anywhere, and it can be like passed through service methods to manipulate via the DML logic. And Apart from that, Apex Mocks framework also supports many features like it is verification of a method when it is called with correct arguments that we already saw. Verification of a method is called n number of times. Like Apex Mocking also provides you the facility to validate, verify dot when, whenever you verify the how many number of times a method is called. It happens in a generic use case like we call a method and we obtain some uh, like return types. And we are not sure that is it being called a single time or multiple time. So we have direct method where we can exit, find exact number of times the method is being replicated. Uh, apart from that, it is a particular set of arguments that is being returned with the fixed values that we can also verify. And if an exception, we want a custom exception to be thrown, like a new or handled exceptions or any type of exception, we can also make our mocking in such a way that it will return us the desired exception. And the framework that I mentioned is being always accessible and it's being updated regularly. So any updates are being committed to the branch, which I will show you. So here are some links and references. I will share this slide to all of you. So you can verify like first one is the uh, direct link to the Apex mocks, this FFLib via the Apex Enterprise pattern. Second one is the Apex Enterprise pattern itself, which I will, which I show you at the starting of the slide. And this is a use case reference link. Like I use the link for the contact one. 
so if anyone want to like see an example how it works so you can refer to this one which is basically the link where we have the all the entire steps replicated from when and until then data is being verified so let's quickly go back to the framework to look something like uh, here as i mentioned that this framework contains all the files so this sfdx source it has all the classes that are involved in the mocking apart from that this is the like uh, things that i mentioned the dependency injection where it has shown the behavior of several methods like verify uh, when it has also the utility methods where it showed the mocking as well as setting up the read only data fields the stub api and the related documentation that is being showed there like these are some uh, useful links that you can refer and apart from that if you go back so this one like this presentation was only based on the ffd webex mocks but apart from that this framework also contains some useful uh, repositories like this force di the apex common builder that can also be like explored and can be implemented so this was like uh, regarding the whole framework from my side and like yes implementing this framework can definitely implement allow you a more flexibility to manipulate the data in the way you want and to integrate as well as to test components or services directly so that's the thing from my side which i wanted to highlight